Hi, this is Ashlyn from Bellevue Avenue and Ashlyn May Photography and I'm going to run you through a quick tutorial on our Essential Retouch Collection. The collection includes the Flawless Skin Set, the Sparkling Eyes and Teeth, and the Makeup Artist Set. First we're going to take a look at the Flawless Skin Set. In this set I have several different skin smoothing options. Quick Flawless is a nice quick skin smoothing action that works well on many different photo session types. Flawless skin tends to work really well with up-close portraits and studio shots. You can also do flawless skin with a little bit less texture. Then we have a flawless skin for distant shots. We have a silky smooth skin action which really smooths things out and doesn't retain any texture. And then we have an overall creamy soft skin. So in this image I am going to use the flawless skin. This is my favorite. And I love how it looks on all of my images pretty much. So all I'm going to do is use a soft white brush so it's nice and soft and flow at 100%. And I'm just going to brush it on over the skin. And it gives a beautiful smoothing effect very quickly but it also retains the texture beautifully. So let's zoom in so you can see the texture. So the beauty of these actions is that you get wonderful creamy smooth skin but it's not over smooth to where they look plastic. They still have a lot of texture to their skin. So here's before and then after. So let's zoom out again. Before and then after. So that's really all there is to it, to the flawless skin. Just play it and brush it on. I love it. It's quick. It's easy. Just a wonderful action, especially I love doing close-up portraits and it makes it super easy for me. For the more advanced retoucher, we included frequency separation. I will say that I like to use this on limbs because it's easy just to kind of smooth those out, but that you need to be very careful on the face because I find that people get a little bit too excited with frequency separation and go overboard and you can kind of reshape the entire face. But let me show you an example of how to use this. So frequency separation, what it does is it separates out the underlying skin tone from the actual texture so that you can work on each separately. So if I wanted to kind of smooth out some of the underlying toning, I would work on the skin tone layer, which says paint hair skin tone. So say that I want to smooth out that kind of dark spot on her cheekbone right here. I'll use my dropper tool and select a nearby skin tone. And then I'm going to bring my flow down to maybe seven and then I'll just start brushing it on. And this kind of lightens it up. I didn't touch the texture at all. So I smoothed out the dark splotch right there, but kept the texture. So if I wanted to work on like those little blotches right there on the texture, I would go to the Heal Clone layer, use my healing tool, make sure that you're on just current layer only, click Alt, select a nice spot of skin, and then just brush right over it. So I'm not affecting any of the skin tone underneath, I'm just affecting the actual texture on the skin. So that's how the frequency separation works. It's great for people who are professional retouchers or spend more time retouching. We also included a dodge and burn tool because a lot of advanced retouching uses dodging and burning to smooth as well as contour. So all it is is just a simple, quick 50% gray layer that you can use your dodging and burning tools on. And then we have specialized retouching tools. These aren't going to always apply to every single image. They're kind of on image to image basis. So she doesn't really have any fine lines or anything or blemishes. She doesn't really have oily skin either. Well, we can try it on kind of that shine spot. So let's go ahead and do that. What you'll do is you'll choose a nearby spot with your dropper tool. Okay, and then you will brush over the spot and it will reduce that shine. Okay, so before and after. I kind of like a little bit of shine, so I don't generally do that too much. Dark eye circle healing. 
Okay, so you can just use this to kind of brighten things up a little bit under the eyes. Let me bring the flow down on that side just a little bit. Okay. And then skin tones. So these creamy skin tones kind of brighten up or tone the skin and give different hues to the skin. I love these. They're so much fun to play with. Obviously, again, you can't use every single one on every image. You just got to pick what you think's the best. So I'm going to use Soft Ivory. Bring my flow all the way up. And it just kind of brightens and softens and gives a ivory glow to the skin. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a little bit. And there's how that works. And there's a before and after. Okay, so that's just a basic run through of the Flawless Skin Set. Let's go ahead and look at the sparkling eyes and teeth. We have Quick Sparkle, which gives just an overall sparkle to the eyes without having to mess with any of the layers underneath. So before and after. But for those that want a little bit more control, we have the All-in-One Sparkling Eyes and this gives you control over each part of the eye so we have the eye sparkle which is kind of like a sharpening then we have the iris brighten I'm gonna bring my flow down just a little and run it across the bottom and then the iris pop that's actually I like to use that on the catch lights and maybe just a little bit on the bottom too it's super bright so you have to be careful not overdoing it with that one then we have the color enhancement, which really gives saturation to the color that's already there. And then brighten the whites of the eyes. You have to be careful with this one not to overdo it so they don't look fake. Okay, and then darken pupil and lash line. It's all the way to 100%. Just brush it on the pupil and run it along the lash line to darken that. And then you have a before and after. Okay, so Iris Color Boost. Again, that's just kind of a subtle saturation to the iris before and after. Then you have Brush on Eye Color, which is fun. And obviously not everyone's going to use this, but if you're getting creative with your images, then we have lots of fun colors to try. So here's gray. This will make a gray eye color. Here's blue, and obviously you can adjust the opacity and bring it down. We have an aqua, bring down the opacity, green, again bringing down the opacity, brown, which won't work very well on hers because they're so blue makes them look a little red but it will work on darker greens and then purple is fun for maybe more fairy tale-ish images and same with pink so those are just fun different eye colors that you can play around with And then the whiten the eyes action. If their eyes are kind of bloodshot or you have a weird color cast in there, this really helps. Reducing red eye veins. This will help. This is a good example here because she's got a red eye vein right there. So let's zoom in. And you just brush that on. And it just reduces those. So let's zoom back out. That looks better. And then spot sharpen. So you can sharpen wherever you want on the eyes. You can sharpen the eyelashes or the iris. So let's go ahead and do that. So before and after. And then lastly, we have the teeth bleach. I can't use that in this image because she's not smiling. 
but it whitens the teeth if they're a little bit dull or yellowish. So that is the Sparkling Eyes and Teeth section of the Essential Retouch collection. Now let's move on to the makeup artist, which is super fun, especially for people in more like boudoir or glamour photography or even senior photography. If the makeup is kind of washed out in the image, you can just go back in and emphasize it a little bit. So since she's a child, I'm not going to do the makeup on her. So we will go ahead and work on this one. She already has makeup in place, but I do like to use the makeup artist to kind of enhance or even change the coloring in the image. So what we've done is build lots of different color palettes for the eyeliner or eyeshadow, blush, all of that. So let's go ahead and do some eyeliner. And I have different colors here, charcoal, ash, brown, natural, and nude. What I'm going to do is go in here and use probably ash for her eyes here. So I'm going to go to flow and bring it down to maybe 15. And I have a white brush and I'm going to have the black layer mask selected. And I'm just going to kind of start brushing it on. So you can do kind of a smoky smoky look if you want. So I'm going to leave the left side untouched and we'll do the right side. Okay, so there's kind of like smoky eyeliner. So I'm going to bring this to the top and we'll delete the rest. Okay, so now let's do some eyeshadow. We have a glamour palette which is really colorful. I'm going to do the natural eyeshadow palette. Okay, so since she has kind of brownish colors on already, let's try some bluish tones just to play around with that and see what it looks like. So I'm going to choose Natural 7. And just kind of start brushing it on. This will give a cooler shadow. And then a little bit different color here. A bit different blue. Then I'm going to lighten it up with a lighter color on the brow bone and kind of in here. So let's do 59 for up here and in here. Okay, so let's see before and after. Before and after. Let me just add a little bit more bluish, just even out shadow there a little bit. Okay. All right, so before and after. Now let's do some eyebrow color. Her eyebrows are already pretty shaped, so I'm just going to show you a little bit how it can fill in. So we will choose Beaver and come in here and just kind of brush that on. And it looks subtle going on, but w when you see it after, you'll be able to see it a little bit more. So before and after. Okay, so now let's do the lipstick palette. Okay, so we'll use the, let's do the deep pink. We'll just brush it right on. And of course, we will adjust the opacity to maybe 15, 14 or 15. Okay, so before and after. And then we also have our lip gloss effect, which makes the lips really shiny. Hers are already pretty shiny, so I'm not sure that I would need it in this image, but I just want to show you an example. So before and after. And then let's go ahead and go to the blush palette. Okay, so I'm going to use the probably the coral and bring my flow down to maybe 14 and just start brushing it on. And this is a very subtle one. Okay, before and after. Then you have the foundation powders. If you want a more even look on the skin, you can use these. I'm going to use Fallow on her. 
we'll do it at 100% just to show you what it looks like on and then we can lower the opacity I'm actually going to erase some from around this side okay so I'm going to lower the opacity to maybe 20 okay before and after and I'm going to bring that actually below the blush because I want to see that blush there you can also do a custom foundation color using their skin tone so I'm going to hide this and run the custom foundation color so what you do is when this window pops up you use your dropper tool to choose their skin tone and it will create a layer for you that you can brush on that custom foundation there we go I'm going to lower my flow a little bit so I can have more control brushing this on and I'm going to use the black just to pull a little bit of that back off okay and then lower this down to maybe 20 so before and after and then you can use bronzer to darken the skin and the face sculptor is another dodge and burn layer setup for you so you can burn the contours and dodge the highlights and then we have the hair shine and the highlights and low lights so let's go ahead and do the hair shine so using a soft white brush you will paint on the black mask over the hair to bring out shine so let's go ahead and do that So before and after. You can also use the highlights and lowlights to add highlights to the hair. So I'm going to use a soft white brush. I'm going to bring the flow down just a little bit and then just run this over lighter areas of the hair to give it kind of depth and pop and some highlights. So, and then you can do low lights, that was, that's going to darken it a little bit. So streaks to darken it in there. Before and after. Okay, so that is how you use all of the actions in the Essential Retouch Collection. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope that you enjoyed the tutorial.